Hi AppSec engineers, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite tools to implement as part of a DevSecOps workflow. And I'm going to be looking at some of their pros and cons while taking you through these list of tools. And let's get started now. My name is Abhay and I'm a DevSecOps expert with over seven years of experience in DevSecOps and over 15 years of experience in the application security space. I authored the world's first DevSecOps course and I still teach it at Black Hat, OWASP and several other places, including of course, our entire DevSecOps learning path on AppSec Engineer, which means that I get to use a lot of DevSecOps tools and I use them in different ways for different people. And while these tools necessarily are not always the best for every situation, they're the most versatile and can be leveraged extensively for DevSecOps use cases. And remember that all of the stuff that I'm talking about today are going to be open source tools. I'm not going to be suggesting any commercial or closed source tools that you can't use because I believe that DevSecOps tool should be accessible to everyone. So without further ado, let's get into some of the DevSecOps tools that I use and of course I recommend quite openly to a lot of folks. And remember, I'm not being paid for any of this or by any of these tools. I'm just somebody who uses them and enjoys working with them because they're so good at what they do. Let's start off with one of the earliest processes in a DevSecOps cycle, which is static analysis. And one of my favorite analysis tools for static analysis, and I think I've been pretty open about this tool in my tweets and in, even in the previous videos, and this tool is SEMgrep. Now SEMgrep is one of my most popular tools for static analysis simply because it is super versatile, it's super powerful, and it is super customizable. All of these three things make SEMgrep an ideal tool for you to be able to run static analysis checks against your application. You can do it with pull requests, you can use GitHub Actions, you can use it on GitLab, you can use it with Jenkins. SEMgrep is a really powerful tool that can help you identify static issues with very little false positives, especially if you write the rules well. And you can use the existing rules that they have. They have some open source rules, but a lot of their best rules are obviously paywalled for their enterprise customers. But even then, SEMgrep gives you the ability, the engine to be able to build on top of it and make a lot of stuff in terms of static analysis. You can build your own rules. It's not very difficult to learn the language. The entire thing is written in YAML. So you just need to understand a few dynamic parameters with SEMgrep and you're off to the races. It can be used on a wide variety of programming languages from C to Java to Python to Go to JavaScript. You can use it for several languages and it is really powerful because you can customize the rules. You can add very specific rules. In fact, one of the things that I like to do with static analysis is do a threat model, identify the security issues or potential threats and use those threats as a basis to define our static analysis test, which is really powerful stuff because you actually get very customized rules based on your application's threat model, which is something that I use SEMgrep for all the time. So SEMgrep is one of my favorite tools for static analysis. Now, static analysis for application source code, SEMgrep, is my obvious choice but you also need to scan your infrastructure as code scripts and that is also something that you need to subject to security testing simply because you obviously can have multiple problems like bad terraform modules or insecure terraform code or insecure kubernetes manifests badly written kubernetes manifests you could have several issues and the tool i typically use for that is checkoff Chekhov has been a tool that's been around for a while and the great thing about Chekhov is that it has still been kept updated in the open source version that it has. It's a really powerful tool that can scan multiple in infrastructure as code scripts or infrastructure as code frameworks and products and you can use that to scan your infrastructure as code manifests. It could be Terraform, it could be serverless YAMLs, it could be CloudFormation or Kubernetes manifests. Chekhov is a really powerful tool that can help you achieve a lot of your security test coverage for infrastructure is code and it can very easily integrate into a pipeline. It has a nice pass fail style analysis, which tells you that these tests have passed, these tests have failed. You can fail on the fail test. You can break builds on the fail test, or you can just decide to triage it and push it to some kind of a correlation or deduplication system for you to be able to analyze it even afterwards. So I really enjoy working with Chekhov. It's a really powerful tool and I recommend it, especially when you want to scan your infrastructure is code manifest for security issues. Let's move on to the source composition analysis and supply chain security side of the fence. 
And there are two tools that in my opinion are complementary tools and can be very easily used either for SBOM analysis or SBOM generation as well as security analysis of the software bill of materials. And I'm talking about SIFT and GRIPE. Both these tools are from Anchor and I really enjoy working with both these tools because one, they are written in Go. Their ability to download databases is really fast, which means that the scanning process is a lot faster even when you're setting them up for the first time. The other thing that is really nice about both these tools is that one does SBOM, which is SIFT. Essentially, SIFT generates SBOMs in different formats, including Cyclone DX, SPDX, and so on. And then you can use Gripe, which is a tool that can scan SBOMs as well as scan your application's inventory for security issues that can scan them against multiple databases and give you detailed analysis of the security issues that you have. So both of these tools work really well as accompanying tool because one can generate SBOMs and one can scan those SBOMs. And I really like them because a lot of the OWASP tools that are great to do SBOMs and other things, by the way, some of them don't do this complementary work really well or they don't really support this complementary capability of generating and scanning SBOMs except for maybe OWASP dependency track. But outside of that, a lot of tools don't do them really well and I really like these two tools because they do these two activities seamlessly which are a very important part of your supply chain security process anyway. So I really like working with SIFT and GRIPE, SIFT for SBOM generation and GRIPE for, of course, scanning these for security issues. Scanning for secrets is a very important part of a DevSecOps pipeline, in my opinion, simply because you can detect potentially dangerous things being committed to your repository by scanning them for potential secrets being committed, like API keys or private keys and uh, passwords and so on and so forth. And a tool that I really love using for this particular purpose is GitLeaks. Now, GitLeaks is an open source tool. I think they also have a commercial variant, but GitLeaks is an open source tool that's really powerful simply because this tool can scan for multiple types of secrets. It also allows you to customize different types of secrets you want to scan for. And I think it gives you a lot of very useful functionality when you are scanning for these secrets. You can scan Git history, you can scan files, you can scan a repository remotely, you can do all of that stuff with GitLeaks, which I find really good. A very similar tool is something called TruffleHog, which is also very similar to GitLeaks, but TruffleHog has some other features that GitLeaks doesn't, and GitLeaks has some features that TruffleHog doesn't. TruffleHog, I think, is also moving towards largely a commercial model, which is why I'm not particularly suggesting it in, in this particular list. GitLeaks, I think, has a more functional open source product as far as I can see. Uh, although TruffleHog is a very nice tool as well, so shout out to them as well. Now it's time to talk about dynamic scanning tools. And when you're looking at dynamic scanning tools, it's always a controversial take because dynamic scanning tools in some ways are obviously going to take a long time to scan your application. So things like burp and stuff like that will take a long time scanning your application. So the immediate question that arises is, hey, do I even need to put it in a DevSecOps pipeline? You may not put it in a DevSecOps or a DevOps built pipeline, but you may end up creating a separate out of band process which you use to automate it anyway. And it's still worthwhile automating your DAST because automating DAST allows you to catch several issues before they actually get into a live or a production grade environment. Now for this, I typically prefer these two tools. Both of them are open source. One is Zap. It used to be previously OWASP Zap, but now Zap is an independent project. And the other project is from Project Discovery, which is called Nuclei. Now both these things, while they do dynamic scanning, they do it in slightly different ways. I would typically use a Zap to do exploratory scanning. When I don't know what vulnerabilities are there, I want to find them. I would typically use Zap in automation mode. Zap has several automation functionalities including a highly configurable proxy, an API that's really powerful. It also has this automation framework that allows you to write YAML and define the kind of automation you should have. I've also used Zap with end-to-end -end test automation scripts that has helped achieve dynamic scanning in a much more streamlined and time-efficient manner, which is why I like using Zap. Outside of this, you also can use Nuclei. Now, Nuclei is not typically the same as Zap simply because it's not so exploratory. Yes, it can be used in exploratory cases, but 
I would largely use nuclei to do regression testing or regression security testing. So nuclei, the way it works is you essentially have a YAML specification where you can write out things you are looking for. So let's say you have a sequence of events that gives you SQL injection or sequence of events that gives you command injection or a sequence of events that gives you an RCE in a particular CVE case, the nuclei is great. Nuclei is not so great for pure exploratory testing. It's much better for things that you kind of already know and you can define signatures for. It's really powerful because it's fast. Nuclei is much faster than Zap, much faster than the average dynamic scanner and I think it's useful to have especially if you know what you're doing when it comes to dynamic scanning. It's, it's a bug bounty person's extensively used tool and I can see why because you can use that extensively to identify issues to a certain extent CVEs and so on and so forth but I still feel that nuclei especially in the context of an application that you're trying to protect internally as part of a DevSecOps or DevOps pipeline nuclei is probably better used as a regression security testing tool than an experience exploratory security testing tool. So that's really my take on Nuclei and Zap in this particular case. Finally, let's look at a tool that can help you scan an environment that you have deployed your applications to. And in this case, let's say that environment happens to be a cloud environment. Now, a tool that I particularly like to use is a tool called Steampipe. Now, Steampipe is not necessarily a security tool. Steampipe is more a tool that allows you to query your cloud environments like you would query a database. So think of OS query for cloud is basically what Steampipe is. Now, uh, Steampipe allows you to write SQL queries and query your cloud environments and get information about your cloud environments. Of course, one of the key reasons you would want to query your cloud environments is to identify whether there are some non-compliant or insecurely configured resources. So for instance, you can use Steampipe to identify that, hey, is my AWS EC2 server running an older version of the instance metadata system, which allows an attacker to potentially do an SSRF, you have a query for that. Or let's say you want to check whether your S3 buckets in AWS have as publicly accessible objects, you have a query for that. Or if you want to check if your Azure rules or your Azure role-based access control parameters have been set up with least privilege, you have a query for that. Or for GCP, you have very similar queries that you would see with all of these different cloud environments. The reason why I like Steampipe is because it's standardized. You can work with it for multiple clouds. It also has these query packs that you can use. So you have a security query pack, you have a CIS benchmark query pack. All these query packs give you a lot of out of the box capability to scan things and get things going in terms of identifying non-compliant security resources. This would really fall into the territory of cloud security posture management. While it's not a full-fledged cloud security posture management tool, you can at least start to use that to identify the security posture of your cloud. And that's why I like Steampipe. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It doesn't do too much more. It doesn't do too much less. It just focuses on its core capability, which is providing a great interface to query your cloud resources. So this is why I like it and I recommend Steampipe, which is also an open source tool. So these are my list of DevSecOps tools that I enjoy working with and I find very useful to work with. I'm sure there are other tools out there that can do a great job. I'm sure you know several tools out there that can do a great job in DevSecOps. So if you do know some, why don't you list it in the comments? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I'll see you in the next one.